Hi, I'm um, Ellie Gerritsen Cornet, as you can see on the screen. I'm um, a gifted specialist, also a music teacher, general arts teacher, um, or formerly at a secondary school here in the Netherlands. I've been teaching gifted children for 12 years, and right now I'm coaching them, and I'm teaching teachers in primary and secondary education at Novelo how to, um, how to, in this presentation, unlock creative potential in the gifted. And um, I'm also a mom of a, a, a nine-year-old right now who is in gifted education and um, creatively gifted, so she's all over the place. You'll see her during the presentation. Uh, she plays the violin, so I, uh, I will, will refer to that. Um, today I want to share with you this story, this personal story of mine, when I was four years old. A tiny girl with this black bobline entering a dance studio together with my mom. Um, I was jumping all around before that time that it happened that I entered the dance studio to be dancing and to be taught how to dance. So when the day arrived, we entered the dance studio and I was really excited, jumping around, taking in the space, wanting to move all over the place and fulfilled with excitement that I could finally express my creative potential, although I wouldn't call it like that, of course, as a four-year-old, but to move everything that was moving inside of me with my body. So when I entered, I did that. I just ran through all of the space alone and uh, walked all around and moved everything. And of course, the dance teacher saw me and she, um, she didn't say anything to me. But when the lesson started, the first thing she said was, well, Ellie, you can go first. Then all the other children will uh, do the same thing as you do. So then I went. But in my mind, I was already put off because I didn't want to be a leader. I was there to express my creative potential that was inside of me and that had to come out. And not that I had to be in front of all these children copying me. I was not the one who wanted to be copycatted, if that is a word. So when I got out of the studio, I said to my mom firmly, Mom, please do not bring me to the dance studio anymore. I don't want to be dancing. I'll do something else, but I don't want to be dancing anymore. So that's the first anecdote I'm going to tell you. On the hindsight of the uh, presentation, I'll refer to it again. I want to quote uh, a quote out of the book Misdiagnosis and Dual Diagnosis of Gifted Children and Adults. Um, we want our children and adults to be creative and to be good problem solvers. What we often forget, particularly with children, is that creativity involves being sensitive, open to new experiences, non-traditional, and challenging the status quo. Yet, from a very young age, we teach children to follow rules, color in the lines, and not question adults' authority. While these behaviors are necessary for a society to function, they are also the opposite of creativity. Sometimes our gifted children find that balance. Other times, they do not. So, what if here is a four-year-old and she's calling outside the, the lines and don't call her outside of the lines, yells an adult, or you're in a critic. She will ask you, why not? Because that's the question the creative voice will ask all the time, again and again, or why or why not, again and again. So when you're teaching these children, they are the children who will ask you all these questions. Then another quote of a, of a known violinist, Yehudi Menuhin. In all teaching, there must be a fusion of authority and humility. Authority as an adult providing a stable framework for, ch for the children in one's care, and humility as another human being ready to educate an equal who may turn out to be a superior. Of course, Yehudi Menuhin was a great violinist and had a lot of 
pupils, but he also had held this humility that there might be a student of him um, turning out to be superior to him. And what do you do then? Do you get frightened or do you guide that child toward the path of flourishing? Last Monday at Nofilo, where I work as a trainer, we did uh, an assignment about the duality in creativity. And this was my outcome. And I thought it referred to sometimes our gifted children find that balance, other times they do not. On the left side, you see the colored one with my name. It's all got these round shapes, it's light, it's, it's spacious, it moves. Uh, for me, it has something to do with the experience that I had as a four-year-old entering that dance studio. And I felt this great fire inside of me that had to come out while I was dancing. And on the right side, you see the black rectangular one. That is the one where I uh, expressed the, uh, the moments that I was not able to express, that creative potential, that it was, that it was suppressed either by my environment or by myself, because I already adapted. It is black, it is layered, it is like sad, and, and, and it's such a, such a contradiction to the vivid experience that I had uh, in the beginning of the dance studio. So, when you are uh, guiding a, a gifted persons with creative potential. I will provide you right now with a couple of necessities in the guidance of creative potential in the gifted. And I divided it in three uh, blocks. One, what we have to be, uh, how do we support them, and what do we need to create to support this creative potential? Well, we really, really need to be non-judgmental. Because um, uh, when we recall the inner critic or the adult saying, are you drawing outside of the lines? No, that is not a, a possibility. That is the judgmental adult that we all have inside us and that uh, maybe some of our children have in, the, uh, in our classrooms. But being non-judgmental, we need that to be creative. We need that, that to expose our inner selves, because it's pretty frightening if something that is inside of you comes out, and then you get this judgment directly on it. We need to be open to experience. That's a personality trait that is very much connected to creativity. Uh, we need to build a trustful relationships, whether we are teaching or guiding these children, that relationship is so important to build it trustfully. And we also need to make an honest connection with them. If we look at what these children and adults need to support, we need to support their possibilities and their challenges. And we have to stir up their autonomy, because sometimes they need so much more autonomy than they get in the regular system. And we have to explore playfulness together to provide safety in our environment, whether it's in a classroom or in guiding or in other places. Uh, when you explore playfulness together, uh, in my uh, uh, um, I could do it through uh, playing piano or playing violin or dancing or, or, or painting. You can do that together. And if you do that together, the pupil also sees how you are dealing with your creativity. So if you play together, then you make that safe space that they need so much. We also have to support showing vulnerability as a strength. Because if we don't show our uh, vulnerability as teachers or as guiders, how do we expect our uh, pupils to show their vulnerability? And we also have to acknowledge that grit is their life force. And with that great grit is the creativity supported. We need 
to support finding suitable mentors and also the main specific masters um, or maybe different specific domain uh, masters. If they are multipotentialized, they can uh, have different uh, domains in which they are uh, going to be flourishing. And we need to support guiding their high sensitivity. They are vivid uh, people with rich inner spaces. Uh, so the high sensitivity is a very great part of them. And we have to also nourish their overexcitabilities and get them to know their overexcitabilities and how to work with them, how they can use them in, in their advantage. And therefore, we need to create time and space for freewheeling during your lesson, during your guidance. Uh, and we need to create focus on the process and on growth and not on the product. Uh, and we need to create more moments in flow together with them or learn them how to create these moments of flow for themselves. And we need to create our own creative peer tribe if I'm a writer, I am very much delighted to share my writing with another writer. But we have to create that creative peer tribe, because otherwise we get these, these lonely creative people in the black uh, rectangular space. We need to create wonder time and also room for creative processes. And that can be a lot of creative processes at the same time. And we also need to create a bigger vocabulary to express feelings. And I wrote vocabulary, but I don't, uh, I don't only mean the vocabulary with the words, also through meanings, maybe with movements, maybe with colors, maybe with music or sound or whatever expression we need to express this fe these feelings that we hold inside of us. Also, we need to create out of head and into body spaces. Because I see a lot of these cognitive um, uh, uh, approaches. And when you want to be creative, when, when you want to be safe, you have to use your body. You have to use this movement that is inside of you and to get to that uh, uh, expressional feelings. Then we have five core attitudes. I take a little bit of water. If we look at some research, Dane Pirto uh, researches a lot about creativity, and she mentions five core attitudes for creativity that you really should take home with you to your classroom or guidance practice. Self-discipline. Openness to experience, that was already mentioned. Also, group trust. Therefore, you see this picture. We really need to get this group trust, because if the environment in the classroom isn't safe, then it is uh, really um, unlikely that uh, children are going to express their uh, creativity. Um, another core attitude is risk-taking. Sometimes for us as adults, it's pretty difficult to see like these risk-taking creative creatures because we see more risks than they, of course, most of the time see, especially when they are in puberty. But we need that, and we need for ourselves then to hold back and let them take that leap. And the other core attitude for creativity, tolerance for ambiguity. So. Um, I spoke about, spoke about duality, but of course it's much more layered, because dual will uh, speak of two things. But there are so many multi-layered th th feelings and expressions inside of these creative uh, people that we need to access. And they are able to, uh, to get that together, although they will maybe stand of, uh, 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 um, in front of each other, or like they are not tolerable for uh, for us uh, as non-creative people. But we really should uh, focus on that. And the last one is the seven eyes for creativity: inspiration, insight, imagination, imagery, incubation, improvisation, and intuition. They are really important, and I want to express the importance of incubation time, because most of the time we don't 
uh, allow ourselves or the pupil that we uh, teach or guide to have the time, that simmer time, to let everything come together, maybe do nothing and just wander around. And then sometimes at the end it will come together and then you get this whole story. So when I look back at that moment in the dance studio, I would rather have that the teacher, that dance teacher, kneeled down to me and said, wow, I see such a fire for you with movement. How would I be able to help you? What would you love to learn with me in class? Then she would have connected with me, started building a trustful relationship, and I would have been opening up to the experience and also to her as a dance teacher to start learning more. Because I've been dancing, uh, uh, putting dancing away for a lot of the time. I started dancing since I was 18, so that is 14 years. If she didn't do that, and I hear that a lot, uh, these um, circumstances, if she didn't do that, then I wouldn't have locked my dancing creative potential. So let's do that a lot more for our p uh, pupils or uh, adults that you guide. So I would like to be providing and creating a safe space for their authentic creative selves together with you. Thank you. <laughs>